Hi guys, in this video we are going over the heart. The first detail I need you to keep in mind is that you are always looking at your patient's heart and your patient is facing you. So it's the opposite of your right and left, okay? So this is the right side of the heart and this is the left side of the heart. The heart has four chambers. The top chambers are named atrium and the bottom chambers are named ventricles. When we look from the surface of the heart, we say that this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle, this area right here. And this is the left atrium and right here, the left ventricle. When we open up the model and we see inside, we can see the chambers better. This is the right atrium. Here is the right ventricle. Here you have the left atrium and here you have the left ventricle. Now, these are the ventricles and between these two ventricles, we have a wall. How do you believe a wall between two ventricles is named? This is named interventricular septum because septum is a wall like the nasal septum was a wall in your nasal cavity separating the right and left of your nose. Now let's go back right here and look at the right atrium. In the right atrium we have this little hole, this right here. This is the opening of this blood vessel right here. And this is called coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is the blood vessel that receives all the used up blood, so all the deoxygenated blood from the heart muscle itself. If you pay attention, you have all these veins right here. And all these veins, they will dump the blood that was used by the heart into the coronary sinus and the coronary sinus opens up inside of the right atrium. Consequently, this was named opening of the coronary sinus right there. Now, besides the coronary sinus dumping, use the blood, so deoxygenated blood inside the right atrium, we also have the superior vena cava dumping blood inside the right atrium and the inferior vena cava dumping deoxygenated blood inside the right atrium. When we look inside the right atrium, besides all these blood vessels connecting to it and dumping the deoxygenated blood, we see that we have this fossa. And this fossa has an oval shape. Consequently, this was named fossa ovalis. Now, the fossa ovalis was an opening when we were developing inside our mother's womb. And when it was an opening, it was called foramen ovale, like the one we have in our head, but not the same, right? This one is in the heart. And when we were born and we took our first breath, this fossa ovale shut close. And then it closed the shortcut that there was between the right atrium and, and the right ventricle. Okay? Because when we are in our mother's womb, we really don't need our blood to go into the lungs to get oxygen because our mother does it for us. So it's like free meal. But when we are born, we need to oxygenate our blood by ourselves. So this little hole cannot stay open and then it closes. Now it's named fossa ovalis. Wonderful. Another thing we find here in the right atrium, and this is very, very particular because we do not, we do not have it in the right ventricle, is a muscle called pectinate muscle. And you can see the pectinate muscle right here. So these ridges are called pectinate muscle and the pectinate muscle is very helpful to allow us to squeeze every single drop of blood out of the right atrium. And when the right atrium contracts, what happens is that all the blood that was in here will be able to be ejected into the right ventricle. Now, for blood that is inside the right atrium to go into the right ventricle, blood needs to pass through this valve. And this valve between the atrium and the ventricle is called atrioventricular valve. Now, this is the right side of the heart. Specifically, this valve is called right atrioventricular valve. As we know, we have the atrium and the ventricle on the left side. Consequently, we have the left atrioventricular valve in here in the left side of the heart. Now, the right atrioventricular valve is also called tricuspid because it has three cusps, three flaps. 
The left atrioventricular valve is called bicuspid because it has two flaps. Also, clinicians love to call the left atrioventricular valve mitral valve. So, the left atrioventricular valve can be called mitral valve, bicuspid, or left atrioventricular valve. Now, how do you remember that the tricuspid is on the right side and the bicuspid is on the left side? You remember that you always try before you buy. So the tricuspid is on the right side and the bicuspid is on the left side. Now let's keep going with our blood flow inside the heart. Blood that is inside the right atrium passes through this atrioventricular valve and go inside the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, blood will flow into the pulmonary trunk right here. And the pulmonary trunk will split into pulmonary arteries that will take the blood, the deoxygenated blood, to the lungs, where the blood then gets oxygenated. Now, the blood will come from the lungs back to the heart, inside the pulmonary veins. And the pulmonary veins right here, they will bring the oxygenated blood and dump it inside of the left atrium. So when you look inside the left atrium, you have the entrance of the pulmonary veins right there. Blood inside the left atrium, oxygenated blood, will pass through the left atrioventricular valve and go into the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, this oxygenated blood then will go into the aorta right here. Okay, now we have valves in our body. And the function of all valves in our body is to ensure one-way flow. We have here valves between the atrium and the ventricles. And the function of these valves is to ensure that the blood that is inside the ventricles will not go back up into the atrium. So these valves right here, they must remain closed when the ventricles contract. And the ventricles need to contract from bottom up because the blood needs to be ejected up into the pulmonary trunk and up into the aorta. The blood needs to be ejected up. What happens is that if the ventricles will contract from bottom up, so from the apex of the heart. And this is the apex of the heart because this is the pointy part of the heart. So this is the apex of the heart, and here on the top part, you have the base of the heart. Now, you need to remember that if the ventricles are contracting from bottom up and the blood will be ejected up, these valves will have to remain closed and that's not an easy task because these valves are basically flaps of endocardium and remember endocardium is a single layer of squamous cells so they're very flexible so we need to have ways to hold the flaps of these atrioventricular valves down and they don't flip and open in a way that allows the blood to go back to the atrium. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. So if you pay attention right here, you see that we have these structures that they look like cords, you see? They look like cords. And these are tendon-like cords that they are named corda tendine. They are tendon-like cords that attach the flaps of the valves to a muscle in the ventricular wall. And this is the muscle right here. These muscles are called papillary muscles. So we have the corda tendine attaching to the papillary muscles. And when the ventricles contract from bottom up, as the ventricles contract, and the ventricles are made up of cardiac muscle, as the ventricles contract, this impulse will also cause the papillary muscles to contract. If the papillary muscles contract, they will hold these tendon-like cords down, 
And when they hold the tendon-like cords down, the flaps of the atrioventricular valve will be held down and they will not evert. So the blood will be able to be ejected into the pulmonary trunk and into the aorta. These valves will remain closed the whole time. Wonderful. Now, when we look right here, you see we have another valve right here, and this valve is at the entrance of the aorta. And when you look right here, we have this valve that is at the entrance of the pulmonary trunk. So this valve right here, if you could really see them, you'd see that they have like a half moon shape. So this valve is named semilunar valve, but this one is at the entrance of the pulmonary trunk. So this is called pulmonary semilunar valve. And this one that has the half moon shape and is at the entrance of the aorta is called aortic semilunar valve.